Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to week three of the NBA. We have our team builder today. We are building for Eric and the Colorado Mammoth Swine. He's got a pretty threatening team. Uh, before I start this team builder, I just want to say this is uh, going to be a very hectic weekend for me. I only have one day off being Saturday. I'm going to have to get a lot done. And I have a cousin's birthday that day that I'm going to be at for about six hours. So this is going to be uh, ridiculously hard to get all my uploads up in time. Uh, if you're watching this around 6 p.m. on Saturday, then I did everything correctly. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm sorry this is a little bit late, but um, it, sh it shouldn't be. I should be able to, to get everything done, hopefully, if I don't procrastinate too much. Anyway, let's jump into the team builder. Uh, with today, we, uh, we are taking on Eric. Like I said, Eric's got a pretty scary team. He drafted one of the Pokemon that I wanted to draft, being Blaziken. Uh, he's actually got two Ubers on his team, being Blaziken and Greninja. You guys will see the team that we are bringing for Eric this week come up on your screen, being uh, Berlin, our Slowbro, Cerebus, our Hydreigon, Thundolos, the Thunderous, uh, Edward, our Mega Scizor, CTC, the Uxy, and St. Louis 2.0, the Tyrantrum. Came up with some pretty cool nicknames because nobody else wanted to help me out. I don't know what you guys are doing not commenting on my stuff, but anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get into this. You'll see his team come up right about here on the right side of the screen. It is a combination of Skarmory, Salamence, Arcanine, Greninja, Jellicent, Luxray, Mega Venusaur, Sylveon, Blaziken, Marowak, and Frostlass. Very, very threatening team. I see a couple of weaknesses though. Right off the bat, my opponent only has two rock setters, those being Skarmory and Marowak. He's not bringing Marowak against me. I do not see that thing coming. It's very, it would be a very strange bring from him if he does bring it. I see the Skarmory coming. Now what that means for me is that if he brings Skarmory, he's more than likely not going to bring the Arcanine in conjunction because Skarmory already checks Mega Scizor with Whirlwind and just it's insane bulk and having a rocky helmet. And if he doesn't bring Arcanine, then this team functions even better. So let's start with Slowbro here, Berlin. We are Assault Vested. <laughs> Let me just show you the investment right here, guys. Max HP, max special defense, calm nature, four in uh, special attack because I didn't have anywhere I re else I really wanted to put it. Psychic, Focus Blast, Ice Beam, and Shadow Ball. Now this thing is made, it's designed to take on Greninja. You would never otherwise see a Slowbro take on Greninja, but if you go back to my draft review video, you will see that I will ha I have absolutely nothing on my team for a Scarfed Greninja. If he brings that thing Scarfed, it's going to plow through my team. He can pack Hidden Power Fire, Ice Beam, uh, Water Move, and Dark Pulse, and he obliterates my entire team. All 11 Pokemon. They're gone. So I have to bring something to answer it, and this is my answer. Assault vs. Slowbro. Now, I take less than half, just under half, at max damage roll from a Life Orb, Timid, Greninja's Dark Pulse. I take a little bit more than half from a Life Orb Modest Greninja's Dark Pulse. I take less than half from a Scarf Greninja's Dark Pulse, even if he's Modest. And I take uh, even less if he's Timid Scarfed. So based on the damage right away, right off the bat, I'm going to know if he's choiced. He could be Expert Belted, so I'm going to have to Calc it in Consequence. It could be a difficult calculation, but we're going to figure it out. I'm going to figure out if he's Scarfed, if he's Life Orb, if he's Specs, whatever he is. If he does not flinch us on turn one, we get off a Focus Blast and knock him out. So, uh, well, we have to land it as well. So, uh, this is the Slowbro that we're bringing to counter the Greninja. Now, in my test game against Mence, shout out to Immortal Mence, guys. Uh, I'll leave a link for his channel in the description as well as Eric's, so be sure to check them out. Mence and I tested, uh, I asked him to counter team me, and uh, we've been bouncing back and forth for counter teaming. Uh, he's, he's a great friend. From the UPA, of course, uh, I've made some uh, some great relationships in that uh, in that league. Uh, mainly survive and and Mence and Drew, but um, this um, this test game that we had together, he brought U-turn Life Orb Greninja. U-turn does about 35% to me, but it also means that Greninja has to get the heck out of there, which is always a plus for me because I have an answer to pretty much everything else on his team with all of the Pokemon that we're bringing. So Slowbro's Psychic is obviously to be able to hit the Venusaur. Actually, I take on a defensive Venusaur because I'm Assault Vested. Psychic does like 50% and his Giga Drain is only doing 35. So I can actually I can actually uh, knock him out before he knocks me out, barring crits. Uh, also, Psychic is just general coverage for the Blaziken, hits it super effective. 
also hits the Arcanine. It's the hardest move that I have to hit the Arcanine with. We're not ro rocking Water Stab uh, because uh, I want to be able to hit the Jellicent and the Frost Last for super effective damage with my moves. So I decided to bring Shadow Ball instead. Uh, Ice Beam is there, uh, and we actually ran into this situation in our test game. Uh, he brought out Mence against me, uh, and he Draco Meteored me. But because I was AV, I was able to take the Draco Meteor even from like 60%. I took absolutely nothing. I think I took like 40% and I knocked him back out with an Ice Beam. So Ice Beam is there for that. Uh, it also hits the... What does it hit pretty hard? Uh, it hits the... Well, it gets potential freezes. It hits the Marowak for super effective damage without me actually having to bring a water move, which is nice because I don't want to heal up the Jellicent at any time. I'm not bringing any water moves on my team for that reason. So that's our Assault Vested Slowbro. Hopefully Berlin can pull through and be able to knock out the Greninja early game. And uh, we'll see about that though. But if the Greninja is Scarfed and it locks itself into Dark Pulse, I have a pretty good answer in our next Pokemon, Cerebus. Now, this thing's nickname, I just want to cover it real quick. Because a lot of people might be uh, confused and think it's supposed to be Cerberus. But actually, it's a mix of the words Cerberus and Erebus. Erebus, which is the, um, the god of, um, I believe darkness in Greek mythology. It's like the embodiment of darkness. So it's actually uh, Cerberus and Erebus together. Uh, so it creates Cerebus and uh, we are Levitate of course. Life Orb, Draco Meteor, Dark Pulse, Iron Tail, Roost. Iron Tail is there to hit the Sylveon for super effective damage. After Rocks and after a Dark Pulse, Iron Tail knocks out any variant of Sylveon. Uh, mostly Specs. I think a physically defensive variant can potentially take it uh, after those two hits if it has it leftovers recovery. Mence actually brought a bibi uh, <laughs> sorry about that, a Babiri Berry Sylveon, specially defensive against me, to be able to take on both the Hydreigon and the Thunderous. It was his response to both. So, very good on his part. I don't know if Eric's gonna think to do that, but either way, we get off a lot of damage on the Sylveon, and then we can bring in our Scizor afterwards if it knocks us out, but uh, Hydreigon is here to put pressure on pretty much a lot of things on my opponent's team, mainly the, uh, the walls being Skarmory, uh, Arcanine cannot take a Draco after rocks, uh, Jellicent does not appreciate a Dark Pulse, uh, I scare out Greninja with a potential Scarfed U-turn if he's not Scarfed, uh, I also get off a huge Draco on the Blaziken, it's not speed boost, so it can't outspeed me outside of a Scarf variant. Uh, I can knock out the Frostlass on the Switch with the Dark Pulse, its Ice Beam doesn't take me out from full, uh, actually, which is really cool. Uh, Marowak is always slower, so uh, I was able, actually, uh, Hydreigon's role in a, my test game was actually, it was able to take out Mega Venusaur. Uh, I was poisoned from its Sludge Bomb, but because of Roost, I was able to uh, stall it out a little bit, flinch it with one Dark Pulse, and knock it out with the following Draco Meteor because I had already gotten rid of Sylveon prior in the game. So this is our Hydreigon set. It's very good. Uh, I think it's going to do uh, wonders for my opponent's team. Uh, I don't think I covered the Luxury too much because I don't think that thing is coming. It shouldn't because if it's Scarf then it locks itself into like super power on the majority of my Pokemon and I switch into Slowbro anyway and it does nothing. Uh, if it's not Scarf then it's outpaced by a lot of things on my team. Uh, mainly this Hydreigon actually. It's at 263 speed just to be able to outspeed the Luxury in case that thing becomes a problem. Uh, because a lot of my team is slow as you guys will see in a second. Um, well actually it's, it's half and half but... Anyway, uh, Hydreigon is here to, to take on the, uh, to lure the Sylveon, potentially knock it out, to uh, damage the Skarmory and the Arcanine. I covered it all, basically, so let's move on. Next, we have Thundolos, our Thunderous. Defiant, because there is absolutely no reason for me to bring Prankster this week. I have no moves that benefit from it. So, and Nasty Plot, I can get up a Nasty Plot at any time, and it doesn't matter, what, matter whether it goes first or last. So I'm bringing Defiant just in case I'm able to get up rocks and my opponent wants to defog them away. Uh, his only defogger being, of course, Skarmory, I believe. And it is also his only form of hazard removal, which is very interesting to, to note. Actually, no, he has the Salamence, which can be a defogger as well, but I don't expect it to be a defensive set. So... He can either bring Skarmory or Salamence, but he does not have Rapid Spin, which means he would have to Defog, which gives me the Defiant boost, which doesn't do anything with our move set, but it bluffs the fact that we might have a physical move that he has to watch out for. So, we are Nasty Plot, Thunderbolt, Psychic, Sludge Wave. Mence predicted this set to a T, and he brought Specially Defensive uh, Sylveon to be able to take it on. I brought in Thunderous on his Skarmory that was uh, that had its uh, Sturdy broken, and I threatened to Thunderbolt, and I went for the Nasty Plot as he switched into Sylveon. I went for Sludge Wave, and I was able to do it KO it, and Hyper Voice only did about 50, and I was getting Leftovers Recovery. I was able to hit Thunderbolt afterwards, and if at any time the Mega Venusaur or the Blaziken came in, I could Psychic them and knock them out. So, that's what this set is for. 
Uh, it's um, it's basically my wall breaker this game. It's, it's extremely important because it threatens my opponent's entire team. As you can see, the Jellicent does not appreciate its presence. Neither does the Blaziken. The Marowak doesn't take a plus two Psychic very well. We are faster than Frostlass by one EV. If I drop this down one, you guys will see. It goes down to 350. I don't want to speed tie it. So I decided to uh, go with 352. We don't need the full investment, so I decided to put it in HP just in case. That one HP could save us the game, or two HP rather. Um, this thing damages Arcanine insanely unless it's like AV. Uh, Salamence does not take a plus two Thunderbolt from full, which is actually very funny. Um, well, I think that was a Life Orb variant that I calced with, so I, have, I might have to check that again, but uh, again, Jellicent doesn't take it, Venusaur doesn't take the Psychic. Basically, I have, I have coverage for the things that normally wall, wall this thing, so uh, this is going to be our wall breaker this week. This alongside with, um, with Hydreigon, just to wear down his walls. I just want to wear them down, because you guys will see later that I have another form of sweeping on my team, and you guys... Uh, will like this. Uh, it's not the next Pokemon. Our next Pokemon is actually Mega Scizor. Now, this is the third time I think I'm bringing Mega Scizor, and it's been put into a defogging role very often because it is our only form of hazard removal. Against Eric, I absolutely need it because he has the Skarmory and the Frostlass. Uh, the Skarmory obviously walls us, but it can get up rocks, and I do not want to deal with rocks the whole game. They are very threatening to Thunderous, uh, to um, Hydreigon's survivability, to Slowbro's ability to switch into Dark Pulse if I have to. So, uh, yeah, um, we are going to be trying to get rid of rocks uh, and spikes with this thing. But it also has U-turn for momentum. Bullet Punch to be able to knock the, out the Frostlass. Actually, in our test game, Mega Scizor got the winning kill on the Frostlass after I weakened it a little bit with Tyrantrum. Uh, he was a Sash variant, so uh, U-turning out on it on the first turn was what I did to break its Sash. He switched into Skarmory, which allowed me to go into Thunderous. I nasty plotted up, and then I got the, uh, the, well, the two-hit KO on the Sylveon, eliminating it from the game, making it a lot easier for Hydreigon and Tyrantrum to function. So, this is going to be uh, Scizor's role this week. Hopefully, it accomplish, uh, accomplishes it pretty well. The 140 speed you see down there is actually to outspeed most variants of Venusaur. I expect my opponent to pack a little bit of speed, potentially, for this Scizor. Uh, so, we're running a little bit more than it would normally pack. It also outspeeds one other thing on his team, Uninvested, and I can't remember what it was. Uh, it might be the Luxray. No, that's not it. Uh, anyway, if I think about it, I'll, uh, I'll mention it during the game, but uh, the 140 speed is just nice. It's a little bit of speed creeping, uh, and I don't need it in defense because this thing is not staying in on anything. I'm using it as a pivot and uh, to be able to U-turn out. Uh, the 112 HP is to potentially take a, um, a hidden power fire from like a scarfed. Uh, Greninja actually doesn't knock us out unless he's modest, so um, we're able to U-turn on him and knock him out. And uh, Defog and Roost. Roost is, that, is nice because it gives me a little more survivability, just like with uh, Hydreigon. So that's our Scizor set, Edward. Uh, our next Pokemon here is CTC. <laughs> I named it CTC because uh, a lot of people like to name Yuxi um, Knowledge. And CTC always says Knowledge. <laughs> he has a song called Knowledge. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely do that. CTC is... Um, it's part of the Hito squad uh, with Pokemon MD, Thunder Blender 777, so uh, go check them out. Uh, anyway, we're rocking a pretty heat set, and I actually didn't get to bring this out against Mence, because I think I like 3 0'd or 4 0'd him, which was really reassuring to my matchup. It, it meant that I had prepped correctly. So um, this is Yuxi. Leftovers, max HP, 184 special defense, 72 defense with a, a bold nature. That bold nature allows me to take two. Um, unboosted outrages from Salamence, so I can actually switch into it. The uh, It also allows me to take Flare Blitz from Blaziken just as well, so that's really good. They have about a, about the same attack stat. I think Blaziken's is a little bit lower than Salamence's, so the fact that Yuxi can take those hits is really nice. Uh, the 184 Special Defense is also to be able to take uh, Greninja's hits a little bit better after a Calm Mind. As you can see, we're rocking Calm Mind on this thing. Uh, I can take Sylveon's hits very well. Even a Spec Sylveon after a Calm Mind is not too hate KOing us at all. It can take Frostlass's Shadow Balls. Basically, this is another one of my win conditions. Uh, it's one of the two. The last one is Tyrantrum, as you guys will see. But Yuxi can basically set up on a lot of Pokemon that my opponent has. Being the Mega Venusaur, if it doesn't po poison us, it can set up on the Skarmory. As you can see, we're rocking Magic Coat. Magic Coat is there because Jellicent will not be able to touch us after a Calm Mind. The only thing that it can potentially do is Toxic us to wear us down. If I can Magic Coat a Toxic back at it and continue to Calm Mind, making him fear the fact that I might continue to Magic Coat, making him in unable to hit me, then I can knock it out with a Thunderbolt after. The combination of Psychic and Thunderbolt 
are able to eliminate my opponent's entire team because this is stab psychic it's not like thunderous is it's stab so thunderbolt is able to hit the skarmory uh it's able to hit the salamence uh well psychic hits it harder uh psychic hits arcanine uh thunderbolt hits the greninja and the jellicent uh, Psychic hits Luxray, Mega Venusaur, Sylveon, Blaziken, Marowak, and Frostlass. So, if I get a couple of Calm Minds up with the leftovers, and the fact that I have Levitate for the Marowak, uh, if Salamence ever locks itself into Earthquake, I'll be able to come in on, on it and start setting up. Uh, basically, this is just one of our win conditions. Uh, I have no special attack investment because it doesn't need it. Once I get a couple of Calm Minds up, I'm, I'm pretty much two-shotting everything. So, that's our Uxie set. It's a very nice set. Uh, his biggest threats are special threats. They're not physical. I don't consider the Arcanine a physical threat because he normally runs a defensive. And against me, he would kind of have to because I have a lot of faster Pokemon. Uh, and I also have a... Um, a Slowbro, which is only really threatened by a wild charge, and normally Slowbro is defensive, so. Uh, his biggest threats are definitely special, being the uh, Mega Venusaur, the Greninja, the uh, Sylveon, um, the Frostlass to my team, because it's typing matches up really, really well, so I have to watch out for that thing, but uh, his biggest threats are special, so if I get a couple of Calm Minds, I should be good to go. His only real physical threats that could hurt me would be the Salamence and the Blaziken. We already discussed that they're two strongest moves to hit us with, do not to hit KO us after leftovers because of our defensive investment. So that's pretty much it uh, for Yuxi. Moving on to the last Pokemon, St. Louis 2.0. If you don't know, the St. Louis Rampardos are a team in the GBA. Uh, well, used to be a team in the GBA. They are also in the UCL. Uh, a YouTuber that I look up to, Dan, a drive, really awesome guy. Uh, the St. Louis Rampardos being his team name and uh, head smash your way to victory. That's exactly what Tyrantrum is going to be doing this week. We have a choice scarf Tyrantrum. Now, the only potential things that outspeed this thing on my opponent's team are Greninja and any other Scarfer. That's it. Greninja and a Scarfer. Those are the only two things. I'm faster than everything else. He only has one Pokemon that breaks the 360 base, oh, well, the 360 speed barrier. So, if we can eliminate that Greninja. Tyrantrum comes in and head smashes everything. You guys will notice we have Dragon Claw on there because I never want to lock myself in Outrage just in case his Sylveon is still around and I need to go for Dragon Claw. Head Smash is there, does a lot to Skarmory even if it's physically defensive. It does a ton. This is a stab, adamant, 150 base move. Head Smash, it's insane. It's so powerful. We have to hit it, but uh, that's, uh, that's another story. We're gonna change this to Rockhead because I actually wasn't Rockhead during the game. It didn't come into play. The last two turns, of, uh, the last three turns of the match were me Earthquaking my opponent's Greninja, knocking it out, uh, because it actually wasn't fast enough to outspeed me with the Scarf. Uh, I also, uh, hit his Frostlass on the next turn with an Earthquake as it knocked me out with an Ice Beam, and then I went into Scizor and Bullet Punched it for the kill. So, that's gonna be Tyrantrum, uh, Hedge Smash, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, and Stealth Rocks are there. Now, I outspeed a regular Greninja if I do this, right? 265 times 1.5. Let's just look at it real quick. 265 times 1.5. As you can see, it hits 397, uh, but 240, 241 actually, uh, times 1.5 doesn't, whoa, that's not right. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, 241 times 1.5, why am I doing this? times 1.5 there we go 361.5 so that does not outspeed a Greninja so if we go up to 265 we can definitely outspeed him the problem is I'm lacking power at that point I'm gonna make a last minute decision before the game the thing is I don't expect my opponent's Greninja to actually be if it's not scarfed I expect it to not be timid either to be modest because it actually outspeeds my team anyway except for the thunderous which he has checks for in Sylveon and uh, there's a couple of other things on his team that normally check it pretty well, like Venusaur, like Marowak, because it's it, I'm, I'm not necessarily going to go for an HP Ice as he switches it in, so it threatens me with a Stone Edge. So, um, I may or may not switch it over to Jolly, as it is right now on your screen. It makes me lack power, but realistically against this team, as soon as the Skarmory is gone, I don't need the power. I have enough. So, I might want to make this thing uh, Scarf Jolly, but again, I'm going to decide uh, when the game comes up, and uh, yeah, guys, um, at first I really wasn't feeling too well about this game, I, th I thought we were going to, uh, to lose it because of the Greninja, 
After looking into it, uh, Mentz actually predicted me to bring AV Slowbro because it does very well against my opponent's team, like the Venusaur and things like that, especially the Greninja though. Um, after playing against him and the fact that he knew what my sets were going to be and he still wasn't able to take us out, and Mentz is a phenomenal player, makes me a lot more reassured about this game. I think I'm going to be able to pull it out. And uh, already the uh, the NBA is starting a little bit better for us than the UPA did. Uh, power rankings actually just came out for the UPA. I might mention that in my team builder as well if you heard that. But um, we were ranked eighth out of what is it, 16? Are we are we actually 16? I don't think we. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are 16 players. So I was ranked eighth out of 16 with a two and four record. That just goes to show you that there are a couple of powerhouses in the league. But out of all the teams with the lowest records, two and four, I was ranked highest because. They recognize that I've been losing to very unlucky situations like the Stone Edge miss last week. So this league is going a lot better. And I, again, I'm really sorry about hacksing out Colton last week. Um, but as long as the rest of my games are hacks free or as minimal hacks as possible, like if my opponent gets like a tiny crit on me that I can shake off and switch into something else, that's not a big deal. If it's a crit that costs me the game, then I'm a little bit more upset. But if that kind of stuff doesn't happen on either end, I'll be happy. Uh, if it happens in our favor, then I can't control it. If it happens against me, I can't control it either. But I'm not going to uh, whine about it either way anymore. Uh, as Shady likes to say, embrace the hacks. Hopefully it doesn't happen anymore in this league though, because I really want to show off uh, what I can do if I draft correctly, which I don't feel I did in the UPA. This team though is going very well for me. Speaking of which, uh, I actually might be making a couple of free agency transactions, uh, which is kind of surprising because I boasted so much about this team just now and when I did the draft review, but there is one little thing that I mentioned in this video that um, I'm lacking greatly and that's hazard removal and I'm getting kind of scared about it because um, it's uh, it's going to affect my team in the future. I know people are going to try to hazard stack me, they're going to find any which way to do it. So I have to be very careful with that and I might need another ha another source of hazard removal other than Scizor because I'm re relying on it way too heavily. Another thing is my Typhlosion. Uh, I don't see myself bringing it, to, uh, bringing it to a lot of games because basically the things that wall a couple of the other Pokemon on my team also wall Typhlosion. So it's hard for me to bring it, like let's say Arcanine this week. It walls uh, my Scizor, but it also walls Typhlosion because I can't do anything to it. So I might swap that out at the same time um, and try to get some hazard removal. We'll see though. Uh, I have to make a decision about it, but uh, basically it would be a double swap. Anyway, if that happens, I will let you guys know. You guys will see a transaction video. I'll put that up, but... Uh, for right now, the team is going to stay the way it is. This is the team we are bringing for Eric and the Colorado Mamoswine. Be sure to be there tomorrow for the game, guys. Watch it and uh, leave a like down below on this video on that one as well. Leave a comment for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Tomorrow. That's it. Ciao. <laughs>